Good morning, church, and welcome to the virtual Sunday service at CAP. May the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of the Father, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this morning. We serve a God who is good all the time, so let's give thanks and praise to Him for His goodness in our lives. Let's make His praise glorious, church. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. To the darkest night. His light will shine. God is good. Yes, He is. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Where the song of praise is out of mind. God is good.
the first and the last, the living one, the thing in Jesus. On this mound there comes a sound that takes the earth and splits the ground. Yet this voice is life to me, the voice of Jesus. And I will sing my songs of love, calling out across the earth. Church. Our responsive reading for today is taken from Psalm 100, and I'd like to invite you to uh, join me as we stand together and read it responsibly, of course, if you're able to do so. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Please be seated. Will you join me as we pray together? A loving, heavenly, eternal Father, what a joy it is to come before you and to worship you with gladness, to come before you with singing as we have done. And we acknowledge that you are our God, you made us, we are yours, we are your people, Lord, in fact, the sheep of your pasture. And so we come into your gates with thanksgiving, we come into your presence with praise, and we acknowledge that you are our God and that you are a good God. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, your love in our lives that has been so unfailing and so... Uh, 
constant with us each and every day. Lord, we thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for looking after us. Thank you for your provision in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to give us wisdom for the decisions that we need to make. And we thank you, Lord, that you have continued to hold us together as a community of faith who hold your name up on high. And we pray that as we come together now and celebrate you and celebrate your presence in our midst, that you would be exalted, Lord, as we talk about how indescribable you are and how you are our El Shaddai and all the other attributes that we will bring into our lives and cover with your presence. And Lord, we ask that even as you come into every home, Master, that you would come with your presence, your power, and that you would help us to understand your word, that you would help us in our giving as we give to you generously, Lord, knowing that every good and perfect gift has come from you. Lord, and we pray that as we think about your word, that you will show us what it is that we need to uh, grasp today, what it is that we need to uh, bring into our lives, what we need to uh, let shape our lives so that we can better be like you and what master we need to put into effect in our lives that we will be true disciples of yours so be present lord in our service and in every home and we pray lord that you would move us away from the things that may be troubling us let us know lord that you are in charge you're in control and that you will take care of the things master that are uh, all around us and uh, crying for our attention. But we ask that you would help us to stay focused on you during this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, let's continue in the attitude of prayer. The problems that we bring to the Lord have not yet passed. But this morning the Lord is calling us to look from where He sees it and give us His perspective. Join me as I sing and as we sing together this wonderful song of our incredible, amazing God. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea All creations revealing your majesty The colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sang, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. Our amazing God. Sky and we know them by name. You are. A 
amazing God All-powerful, untamable Awestruck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Let's continue in an attitude of worship as we bring to our Lord his tithes and our offering to the one who is El Shaddai, the one who cares for us, the one who comforts us. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Alyon Adonai, age to age you're still the same by the power of your name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kamkana Adonai, we will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through your love and to the Lamb, you saved the Son of Abraham, through the power of your hand, you turned the sea into dry land. To the outcast on her knees, but the God that really sees. And by your might, you set your children free. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Alyon Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same. By the power of your name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Er Kamkana Adonai, we will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through your years you made it clear that the time for Christ is near, though the people could not see what Messiah ought to be. Through your word contained the plan They just could not understand Your most awesome work was done Through the frailty of your son El Shaddai, El Shaddai El Alyon Adonai Age to age is still the same by the power of your name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Er Kamkana Adonai, we will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai, we will praise and lift you high, El Shall we invite the Lord to bless our offerings? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bring these offerings before you, Lord, and we ask that you would bless it and that it would go out, Master, into places where it needs to go. And Lord, we also invite your blessing on each one who has given, and we pray, Lord, that you would continue to pour, Lord, your resources, your strength, and uh, Lord, all that we need into our lives. We pray, Lord, spe specifically for those who may not be getting any salaries, Lord, during this time. Continue, Lord, to provide for every need that they may have. We pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. <clears throat> all right, church, we've been looking at the uh, 24th and 25th chapters of Matthew, and we are coming to a close here. We uh, looked at the 24th chapter of Matthew, the end of it, where we saw that we were exhorted to be faithful with the responsibilities that God had given to us. And then we looked at the first uh, 13 verses of Matthew 25, and we said we need to be prepared for his return, that it will come suddenly and that we will not be able to predict it. And then we looked last week at the parable of the three servants 
and we said that we have to be ready to give an account to the Lord. And today we're going to look at the 25th chapter, verses 31 to, uh, I think, all the way down to the end of the chapter and see what we need to uh, understand from this passage. But can you believe we're going to reach the end of the 25th chapter and we'll stop here because then it gets on into the passion narratives which we will leave for uh, next year. But we get into Advent the following Sunday. 29th is the first Sunday in Advent and uh, it's a time when we begin to look at the the birth narratives, isn't it? The incarnation of Jesus and we spend four weeks just looking at all of those uh, accounts that surrounded his birth and then finally on the 25th we look at the birth of Jesus himself. Uh, and it's so good that we get a day like this to celebrate uh, each of these important aspects of our Lord's ministry with us. And I'm excited to see what all of these uh, narratives about his birth can help us understand him better so that we can better follow after him. But for today, we're headed back into the 25th chapter of Matthew and I'd like to read from verse 31. Matthew 25, 31, and if you have your devices, I'd like to invite you to follow with me. Jesus says, But when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit upon His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in His presence, and He will separate the people as shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at His right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused to help the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Strong, strong words, isn't it, from our Lord. Let's invite His beautiful presence here into each of our homes and invite Him to speak to us through the grid of this passage. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, these are Your words and we ask that You would help us understand it today in our context and what it means personally for each one of us that we may better be able to come with confidence into your presence Lord because we have followed these instructions of yours. So help us to understand it. Pour your Holy Spirit upon us and uh, into us Lord in ways that we can uh, understand what we need to as we learn from you. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. All right. So, at the very outset, I think there's one key point that kind of leaps up and says, yeah, I'm the main point here. And I believe that main point is this, that there are serious consequences for ignoring the needs of the least of these. There are serious consequences for us if we ignore the needs of the, and I quote, least of these my brothers and sisters, as Jesus said. So, what is he talking about? What needs must we not ignore? He says that you f need, when I was hungry, when I was thirsty, when I was naked, when I was a stranger, when I was sick, when I was a prisoner, then no help was forthcoming or help was forthcoming at that, that time. That there are grave consequences if we ignore those the, who Jesus refers to as the least of these. And I'm going to get to that. That's why I'm continuing to use this term, the least of these. As they were hungry, as they were thirsty, as they were naked, as they came as strangers and we had the opportunity to invite them and give them hospitality or to care for them when they were sick or to visit them in prisons. So, those are the needs that Jesus says had to be met, which were met or did weren't met. So, what will happen on that final judgment day? Well, it seems like when we finally stand and all the nations are gathered together, then the king will look at all the people and as a shepherd would divide the sheep and the goats, so will the king do to all the people present. And the sheep will be put to his right hand and the goats will be placed on his left. And then to the sheep, he will tell them that they ministered to Jesus' needs and they, they weren't aware that they had is how they would respond, but they did when they ministered to the least of these, my brothers and sisters. And the consequence of having ministered, well, they will hear these words, come. Hear these words, come, be blessed of my Father. And then inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the very foundations of the earth. To these who had ministered to the needs of the least of these brothers and sisters of Jesus, they will hear the words, come. And then, those who have been put on the left, as a shepherd would separate the sheep and the goats, will realize that they didn't minister to these needs, and apparently didn't know that they hadn't ministered to Jesus, but were told that it was when they hadn't met the needs of the least of these that they had missed the opportunity. And the consequences for them? Away. Away with you cursed ones. Go into the place that is reserved for the devil and his demons. So to the sheep who ministered to the least of these, they heard the word come. To those who didn't minister, they heard the word away. Well, sobering parable, isn't it? Because they're very, very grave consequences, eternal consequences. So what would be inferences that we can get from this account? What can we infer? Well, I think there are five inferences and I'm going to just put them out to you as we work our way through it. First, that Jesus is in the least of these. That when we minister to the least of these, we are actually ministering to Jesus. So the first inference is that Jesus is in the least of these. Secondly, 
that we need to minister to the least of these. That's it. It's important that we find out who this least of these are and minister to them. Thirdly, that we may not be aware that we are ministering or not ministering. That it's possible, as we've seen, that they stood in front and said, Lord, when did we help you? Or Lord, when did we not help you? And they weren't aware. So it's possible that we may not be aware of what we are, uh, that we are ministering or not ministering. Fourthly, that there are serious consequences to ignoring the needs of others. That there are serious consequences of ignoring the needs of others. And fifthly, that the consequences are final that the consequences are final. So, let's now probe a little deeper because it seems as we read this that the most important people here are who Jesus refers to as the least of these my brothers and sisters. That all that he's expecting to help, to, uh, to feed, to give, to take care of the thirst, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the prisons, all of them, okay, have to do with the least of these. So let's ask the question, who are the least of these? Well, Mark 3.35 would help us understand a little bit more because it says that those who belong to Christ and do his will are his brothers. Those who belong to Christ and do his will are his brothers. Remember Jesus saying, whatsoever you do to the least of these, my brothers and sisters. Okay. So who are the brothers and sisters of Christ? Jesus says, those who belong to Christ and do his will are his brothers. Therefore, today, the ones who do that, who, who do the will of God, follow Jesus. Well, it's the disciples of Jesus, isn't it? It's those who follow him. But then he goes on to be more specific. Take this group of people who follow after him, who do his will, and then move all the way down the totem pole to the least of these, the ones at the very bottom. And he says that we have to do it to the least of these. Who are these people at the bottom? Well, Jesus has given us the list, isn't it? These are the ones, followers of Jesus, who are hungry. Followers or disciples of Jesus who are thirsty, who are, who come in as strangers looking for a home, a place of hospitality. Those who are not clothed, who don't have clothes, those who are sick, those who are in prison. So, when we feed the hungry, when we give a drink to the thirsty, when we invite the stranger into our home, clothe the ones without the means to buy clothes, take care of the sick and visit the ones in prison, we are actually doing all of this for Jesus. He, beloved, is the recipient of all our actions. Did you get that? When we do all of this, we're actually doing it for Jesus and he receives those actions. And what we have done for him, get this, is the defining delineation between life in the kingdom and eternal punishment. So what we have done for him, beloved, delineates us between life in the kingdom and life with eternal punishment. All right. If you remember Colossians that we've just finished, remember Paul also says that we need to do everything as unto the Lord, that we see the Lord in the places that we do things, that we do everything as unto him. 
And he repeats the same thing in Ephesians as well. So, as we feed the hungry, the thirsty, stranger, this whole list, remember that we do it as if we are doing it for Jesus. That Jesus is in the midst of the least of these. But, a question must be surfacing at this point that says, really, is Jesus only saying that we need to take care of this group of people who follow him? What about others? What about the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, everywhere else that we find all around the world? And I must quickly add that that's not what is implied. Beloved, if you look at the whole body of scripture, we are exhorted and encouraged to help the poor, the sick, the widows, etc. Let me give you a sampling of scripture. Proverbs 31. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. In James 1.27, real religion, the kind that passes muster before God the Father, is this. Reach out to the homeless and loveless in their plight and guard against corruption from the godless world. Matthew 19, Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Luke 14, 13. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. John 3, 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and with truth. No, we are expected to look after the poor, the needy, the marginalized, and the disenfranchised who are in our midst. But what Jesus is saying is to go beyond that, that our response to his brothers and sisters, ones who follow him and obey him, has dire consequences if they are not helped. We help everybody, but we particularly make sure that ones who follow after him are not still hungry and thirsty and destitute and unclothed and lying, languishing somewhere. Jesus is saying, because I am there and I want you to also be mindful of that. And I want you to be so mindful that you become aware that there are extremely harsh repercussions. If while you look after everybody else, you forget about the least of these my brothers and sisters. So, let's ask the question, what can we do? What can we do about this particular passage? Well, <clears throat> I was uh, looking at Facebook this morning and came across a post that was uh, put in by former president of Asbury Seminary, Dr. Jeff Greenway. And uh, he was actually talking <coughs> about uh, taking care of the many pastors who were going through difficult times during this last uh, eight months and uh, mentioned that there were some 1,500 pastors who were giving up and getting out of ministry. Uh, actually, before the pandemic and more, that, that number has increased through the pandemic because they've not got the support they needed, the encouragement or whatever it took to keep going. And he was just talking about that, but I, it made me kind of think through that there are so many people, beloved, out there who desperately need a touch from you and from me. So, as we look at the needs of the least of these, 
through this passage of scripture, I feel that there are five points that I can leave with you that can make us more aware and help us to make sure that on that final day we will hear the word come rather than away. The first one is this, that we pray and ask God to make us aware of who it is that needs our help. We pray and ask for an awareness. You know, sometimes we get so uh, kind of inoculated against uh, the needs of people. I, I remember when we, many years ago, when we were in seminary and out of India, and I'd been away from India for about four years, and then came back for my first visit. And I was going down a, a, a road in uh, Mumbai, and a road that I had traveled uh, hundreds of times before I had gone away from India. And I remember going down that road and shocked at the number of people on the pavement who were actually spending the night there. And I was appalled until I realized that I had seen, nothing had changed. I had seen them even before when I used to travel up and down, but I would see them but not see them. But when I came back, I had new lenses on and suddenly I could see the poverty and just the displacement that was there. And so I was thinking, we need to pray that God would give us new fresh lenses to be able to see the least of these, wherever they may be, and bring them to our attention so we can help. Secondly, that God would unstop our ears so that we can hear their pleas for help. Sometimes we get so caught up with our own work and our own activities and the own, our own treasures that we are going through that we really shut out every other noise, isn't it? And among the noises we shut out could be pleas for help from some of the least of these. We need to pray and say, Lord, unstop my ears so that I can better hear when I am asked for help. Thirdly, that we do something to help or to alleviate this need. So often, beloved, isn't it? We know what we need to do, but we don't do it. There is a a huge gap between intent to do something and actually doing something. And many a good intention falls within that gap, isn't it? And so to be able to pray and say, Lord, help me when I know that there is a need to be able to meet that need or alleviate that pain or suffering or whatever is needed. Fourthly, to make it an integral part of my life. That a part of me, who I am as a follower of Jesus, must be also that I look with lenses that identify other followers who need help. That that just becomes part of my mental makeup. The way I walk through life every day. That my eyes are seeing, my ears are hearing what I need to see and what I need to hear. But you know, this fifth point is what hit me really hard. Because it says in verse 45, and he will answer, answer to the question, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or stranger? That question, they're asking when? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. Refused to help, which means that we had an opportunity to help, but turned away. 
and then to be able to one day to hear away from me because of that refusal. And it hit me so hard that there are times in our lives when we just refuse to help people and we are actually refusing to help Jesus and that's going to count against us when we one day stand before him. So to pray and say, Lord, don't let me refuse you. Lord, if there's ever a time when I'm saying no and I'm about to turn, turn me back and say, that's me. That's me. That's your opportunity to do something for the least of these my brothers and sisters. So, beloved, five points that uh, we should pray about. And I just want to kind of wrap it up by looking at these two chapters and say, you know, as we look at who we are, as we look at one day standing before him, when our life here is over, and we've done everything that we could, that we need to be able to stand before him and know that we have been faithful with our responsibilities, that we have been prepared for his return, that we are ready to give an account, that we are aware of the needs of the least of these, and we have met those needs. Amen. You know, our closing song is, I walk and I talk with him in the garden. And I think there can be no better way for us to be primed to see the least of Jesus' brothers and sisters than to be able to walk with him and talk with him every day and hear him speak to us and enjoy his company. Let's sing this song together as our closing hymn. What a joy it is to know that the Lord calls us to be his very own. Would you join me in singing In the Garden?
Would you receive this benediction? Dearly beloved, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the continuing, enabling, inspiring presence and fellowship of His Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us, beloved, until the very end of the age. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Stay safe.